Are you a full-time employee or business owner and a part-time parent and or spouse? Hello, my name is Devon Bankett and I have a secret that I'm about to share with you. The secret that many people have spent a lifetime searching for and most never find. Well, I have found the secret of money and you're about to learn it too. But first, have you noticed that people with money have more fun, travel more, have more stuff, are healthier, and really get to enjoy life to its fullest? And people without money has to work harder, has less stuff, encounters a lot of stress, get sick more, and have to work all the time. There are really only two groups of people, the haves and the want to haves, which some call the have nots. So the $64 million question is, why are the haves are in the minority and the have nots are in the majority? Now, there are a lot of people who put themselves in a lot of debt just to pretend to be one of the haves. Do you know any of these people? Are you one of them? Well, you're about to take a test and find out, and please don't get upset if you find out that you are really in the have not group. The first thing that you need to really understand is there are four quarters in life, just like there are four quarters in a sporting event. The first quarter is from zero to 25. The second quarter is from 26 to 40. The third quarter is from 41 to 60. And the fourth quarter is from 61 to 80. If you live longer than 80, then you are considered in overtime. I consider the first quarter the stupid period of life where most people make the most stupid mistakes that you could ever make. And when you get to your second quarter in life, you're trying to fix all of the problems that you created in your first quarter. And when you get to your third quarter, believe it or not, where you're supposed to start enjoying life, the same mistakes from your first quarter has carried over into your third quarter. For example, if you had children in your first quarter, they are now grown with grown problems <laughs> uh, like traffic tickets, car problems, help with their bills, help with their children, which are now your grandchildren. Now let's not forget about your parents. What quarter are they in? If you're in your third quarter, they should be in their fourth quarter or either in overtime and they too need your assistance. So you now have more problems than you have money. If you started drinking, smoking, doing drugs, or drinking coffee in your first quarter, this could have caused you some health problems in your third quarter. And even if you didn't smoke, drink, do drugs, or drink coffee, when you think you're about to retire in your fourth quarter, you realize that you're not as healthy as you thought you were. So on top of all the expenses with your children and your grandchildren and your parents, you now have to contend with the high absorbent costs of medicine. And what quarter are you in? And what stupid mistakes did you make in your first quarter? <laughs> Does it look like the same stupid mistakes that your children are making? Think about that. If you didn't make any stupid mistakes in your first quarter, the first thing I want to do is congratulate you, but four of my five children was born in my <laughs> first quarter. Now, not to call my children a stupid mistake because I love them all, but could it have been done a little differently? Of course it could. But the purpose of this video isn't to enumerate or just elaborate on these problems. There is designed to eliminate them. Now, before I give you the secret of money, let's look at why these issues are so prevalent in America. Now, I'm about to teach you something that your employers do not want you to know. We all have been taught to go to school, find a good job, work on that job for 20 or 30 years, and retire with your pension and Social Security, right? And this is how it looks. This is the circle of life. First, you are born, you go to school, you get programmed to go to work for someone for the rest of your life. You find that good job. You work there for about 20 or 30 years. Then you retire. And what is the age that most people retire? 60, 65, 70? Well, the reality is when you retire, you have to go back to work because you now realize that your social security and your pension just isn't enough to sustain. Or you depend on one of the three Fs, family, friends, or the federal government. Do you think this is fair for you to become a burden on one of your children or family members when you get too old to take care of yourself? And for the ones who go back to work, they work until they die because of what I just discussed about the financial problems that you never think about. And this has been perpetuated to your children and they too will do what you do. Have you noticed how the sharks attempt to take advantage of the elderly with those commercials about uh, reverse markets that, that's, that they say they'll give you a loan that you don't have to pay back? 
<laughs> well, please be aware that these companies are basically taking your home from your loved ones for pennies on the dollar. Yes, they'll give you a loan for, for money that you may need, but at the same time, when you die, they take your home for pennies, which is like stealing from your loved ones. So it's all based on equity that you have in your home. With equity, anyone will give you a loan a loan that your family can pay back and keep the house instead of a stranger taking the house from your loved ones for pennies on the dollar. Now, this is how the rich stay rich. This is what you call the big fish eating the little fish. Are you a little fish? People, this doesn't have to happen this way. You are about to learn how to prevent this from ever happening to you or any of your family members, but this is something else that you have to see. Watch this. We all only have 24 hours in a day, and this is how most people's days are broken down. The alarm goes off around 5 a.m. You leave home around 6. You drive for about an hour in rush hour traffic. You arrive at work around 9. You work until 5. You get back in rush hour traffic for another hour. You arrive at home around 7 if you don't make any stops. You attempt to cook and help with homework around 8. Then you get into bed around 10 and try to watch your DVR and you fall asleep. And it all starts all over again. Then on the weekend, you try to catch up with your, your rest or you try to cram everything into Saturday and Sunday. And who's raising your children? Do you know that the damage that is done to your child for you not being there to raise them when they're young? Have you noticed how they are picking up bad habits from somewhere else that you didn't teach them? People, this is the trick that 97% of the people fall for. Do you know if a company pays you $200 an hour, they're probably earning about $400 an hour off of the work that you do? But you have to work to pay your bills, right? Are you aware that the average annual income for two working adults here in America is about $50,000? And what can $50,000 do for you? Well, let's take a look. This is the income reality test where I take your income and show you how it's spent each and every month. This test will show you if you are in the haves or the have nots group. Now, please don't be embarrassed. No one will see this test but you if you're taking it by yourself. So please pause the video at this time and find something to write with to take this test for yourself. No, no, serious, pause the video. Okay, we're gonna take some moderate numbers, so please put your numbers into, into this equation. Just write down the amounts that you spend each and every month on your expenses and add them up at the end of the test and you'll see where we're at. So if an item doesn't apply to you, just skip that item and move on to the next one. So let's get started. Your mortgage, your rent is at $1,200 a month. Your light bill, $200 a month. Your home phone, which some of us still have, is about $50 a month. Car note, $250 a month. Credit cards, $400 a month. Water bill, $30 a month. Gas bill, $60 a month. Gas for your cars, about $100 per month when gas was $1.65. Daily lunch, if you're only spending $5 a day on a 20-day month, $100. Lunch for your, your children, $100. Groceries, $400 a month. Car insurance, $150. Homeowner's insurance, $85. Dry cleaning, $50. Beauty and barbershop, $150. Entertainment, $100. Cable and satellite, $70. Landscaping, $80 a month. Health insurance, $250. <laughs> yeah, right. Life insurance, $100 a month. Clothes and shoes, $100 a month. Cell phone, $100 a month. Uh, homeowner's fees, $60 a month. Homeowner's taxes, $80 a month miscellaneous, let's say about $100. Now please pause the video again and grab a calculator and add up all of your no normal monthly bills and don't be afraid, just add them all up, pause the video. No really, pause the video. <laughs> okay, in this example, for the total of this month, in this example is $4,365 times 12, which equals $52,380. So if your average income is $50,000 and you're spending $52,380, this means that you're $2,380 upside down. But wait, with $50,000 a year, how much do you really take home? 
At $50,000, you're probably at a 15% tax bracket, which means you're paying about $7,500 in taxes. And something that you really need to understand is you pay taxes on every dollar you earn and you pay taxes on every dollar you spend. So add that $7,500 to the $2,380, that's a total of $9,880 that you're in the hole. Now, I know some of you are thinking that I've missed some bills. Well, here are some expenses that most people never ever think about and I need you to do this. Estimate what you spend each and every year on these items that I'm about to show you. Gifts for Christmas, birthdays and holidays, child care, savings, <laughs> yeah right, uh, car repair. When was the last time that you had to purchase a set of tires? Do you remember how I talked about the different quarters of life? Just like recently I just paid over $1,400 for my daughter's catalytic converter for her car. <laughs> okay. Uh, home repairs. I just recently put a new roof on my home and it cost me over $10,000. Charities like churches, money that you give to people on the streets when they're begging to clean your windows. Uh, vacations, toll and parking, computers, optical for the contacts and all the solutions that you need for your eyes, snacks like at work, school supplies for your children, movies and game rentals, nutrition, health and fitness, dues and fees, school loans that you just cannot get around because they will garnish your, your wages, hobbies, prescriptions, kids' activities, not just your children, but also your grandchildren. Pet expenses, my dog just had to have some dental work done on his teeth. <laughs> uh, personal loans to family members that you never ever get back from them. Uh, the internet service at your home, traffic tickets, you know, that you have to support your local municipalities. <laughs> Uh, household cleaning, tips that you give at restaurants and other places that you give people a tip, pool services, home businesses, cigarettes, alcohol, child support, life insurance, investments. What about an accident in a car with the deductibles? Co-pay when you go to a doctor. And one of the things that catches most people by surprise are funerals. The average funeral costs about $8,000 if you don't have insurance. Now that's over 35 items that most people never add into their financial equation of life, which means if you're over $9,000 underwater before these expenses, what do you do? Credit cards. Now, isn't it weird how credit cards have become an integral part of everyone's life here in America? You can't purchase a car. You can't purchase a home. As a matter of fact, companies are now checking your credit before they consider hiring you for a job. But this is something that you really need to see. Using a $20,000 credit card balance at 18% interest and assuming a 1.5% minimal payment of $300, it would take you over 62 years and over $203,000 in interest, interest to pay that off. Back in 1996, US News and World Report created this chart to see how much money you would need to retire at 65 with the inflation adjusted equivalent to $35,000 yearly, find the nest egg goal that matches your age, and then find the amount that you already have saved to see how much you would have to kick in annually. So if you are at 45 years old, you see here at 45 years old, you would need $1.4 million in an investment account that is gaining you 10% annually before you retire and 77% thereafter, which inflation of 4% yearly and at 90, your account will be depleted. So whatever you do, don't live past 90 if you have $1.4 million. Now find the age on, your, on this chart, and if you're at 45, and you don't have $1.4 million or anything saved, you would need $24,300 each and every year to be able to retire with $35,000 a year. But let's say that you have $25,000 saved, and I don't know how, but because of the economy right now, uh, most people are robbing their 401k plans like crazy. But let's say that you have $25,000 saved, which means you will only need $21,363 per year. Do you have an extra $21,363 in, in an account somewhere that you could use? Do you know of any fund that can pay you 10% interest guarantee? There are a lot of people who have to depend on, the, on these predatory loan companies. Have you noticed that you can find a payday loan or a car title loan business on almost, on almost every street corner in your neighborhood? My philosophy is if you have to borrow to pay your bills and you are piling on major stress, do you know that stress is life's number one killer? Do you know what causes the most stress? 
Well, women will say cheating husbands, but no, it's money problems. So what are your options not to let any of this happen to you? Let's look at it. Get a second job. With the limited amount of time that I just showed you, where would you find the time or the energy? Go back to school. I would never say that school isn't a, is, isn't a good thing, but again, where would you find the time, the energy, or the money? And have you checked on how much it costs for the college today? But if, you, if you're still living at home, you're probably able to go back to school because you don't have all these expensive. But if you go back to school, you must have to depend on one of those high interest loans that you cannot get around. They will take, it will take you a lifetime to pay this loan back and you can't get around it because if they wanted to, they will garnish your wages and keep your income tax check. Well, let's look at the next option. Open a conventional business. Where would you find the money and, and are you aware that banks will only loan you money if you can prove to them that you don't need it? And matter of fact, and what do you know about running a business? <laughs> I have to tell you about my 20 plus years in conventional business. It was like I was working for the landlord, the light company, and even sometimes my employees because they would earn more than I would because of the high cost of the expenses that I had to pay each and every month. I was never at home because I had to always be there to run my business, which meant that I couldn't take a vacation. My children was growing up without me and I was always fatigued because of a conventional business. This was because I wasn't born in a rich family and I had to attempt to start a small business and turn it into a large business, which never happened. Because if you ever open up a small business and do well, someone with a lot of money can steal your business away from you. This reminds me of a gentleman who owned a uh, passport ID picture business. He was uh, right across the street from the main built building where you get your passports from, and he made all the money where he was charging $19.95, which meant that he, everyone had to go to him when they left the office downtown to get their passport, or they had to find a place and lose their parking and pay again. So he cornered the market. Uh, with that business until someone noticed that he was the only one there and there was a piece of property available available across the street from him. So someone went and opened up a passport ID picture business right across the street from them and charged a dollar less than the original guy. Well, they went back and forth until the customer won because the price went from $19.95 for a passport uh, ID picture to $1. Again, another example of big fish eating little fish. Your next option is to win the lotto. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but just go to your local convenience store in your neighborhood the night of the lotto and you will see so many people who have fallen for this gimmick. Someone has to win. <laughs> or join one of those scary MLM home-based businesses. Well, let's evaluate that option. You shouldn't have to get a loan to pay for it. As a matter of fact, the enrollment fee is tax deductible and you're in business without having all of the added expenses of a conventional business. And the people that you refer are paid, for, paid by the parent company, which means you don't have to pay them from your profit. As they earn additional income, you earn additional income from the work that they do. If you have a W-9 job, you can increase your take-home check by $500 each and every month for having a home-based business. You have a team of people who's fighting for your success, or you're supposed to. <laughs> you work the hours that you want. You don't have a boss. You make money from other people's efforts. And if you're not earning from other people's efforts, guess what? Someone's earning from your efforts. And when you are earning from other people's efforts, if something happens to you, like you get sick, guess what? You're still earning income. The business is willable, which means if you build it and it starts earning residual income and you pass away, you can leave the revenue to one of your loved ones. For the people who don't know what residual income is, well, it's doing something one time and getting paid for it over and over and over again. But the problem is most people have a negative opinion on MLM because they have either tried it before or and got involved with the wrong people or someone has told them some horrible stories about their experience in this industry. And on top of all of that, your employer wants to keep you under their control. Do you know if you told your boss that you want to start a home-based business, they'll get angry with you and tell you that that's a very stupid idea? Let me ask you a question. What is the structure of most corporations? Well, let's take a look at it. First, you have your president, CEO, then vice presidents, then you have your regional managers, some district managers, even more local managers. These are the guys with the different color shirt and the keys to the facility. <laughs> then there are the employees, which is where 97% of the people are. And what does this resemble to you? 
Let me ask you this. If someone on the bottom comes up with a great idea that could help the company make a lot of money, who gets the credit for it? Well, usually it's the vice president because the employee tells the local manager, the local manager tells the district manager, the district manager tells the regional manager, the regional manager tells the vice president, the vice president tells the president, and the vice president is the one who usually gets the raise. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Which one can afford to take a vacation anytime they want to, the top or the bottom? Which one has to work for a year or more to get a staycation, the top or the bottom? Oh, for the people who don't know what a staycation is, it's when you have worked for over a year or more to get vacation time off, but you can't afford to go anywhere, so you stay at home during this vacation period. A few minutes, I'm going to show you how to take a paycation, which means that you can get paid outside of the money that you earn from your job, get paid, and go anywhere you want to and be able to afford it. The top or the bottom? So which one? The top or the bottom? Which one has to ask for permission to leave work if their child gets sick at school? The top or the bottom? Now, I know that sounds pretty harsh, but it's true. If you receive a phone call from the school nurse telling you that your child is sick, most employees have to ask for permission to leave work. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine had this happen to her, and she asked the manager if she could take off because her child got sick to pick up her child. The manager actually told her, could you find someone else to pick up your child? But what are you to do? I know some of you are thinking, man, I would quit that job. Then how would you pay your bills? Just think about it. Do you want to take that risk of being out of work without knowing how long it would take you to find another job, especially in this bad economy? So again, the top or the bottom? Which one, ha which one makes more money, the top or the bottom? Which one works very hard to make the other rich, the top or the bottom? Now, I have to share this story with you. I have a good friend of mine <laughs> that called me recently, and she called me one day and she said, you won't believe what I'm doing right now. She told me that she was on someone's yacht. She was very, very excited. Then I asked her the question, whose yacht is it? And she told me that it was her boss's yacht. Then I told her that you shouldn't be that excited because what he's doing right now is rubbing this in all of your faces to show you how hard you have worked to purchase him a yacht. It wasn't my intention to kill her excitement, but it was absolutely true. She wasn't earning enough money to, to buy a yacht. Well, where are you on this chart? Where would you like to be? Would you like to have other people working to help pay your bills and feed your children? Think about it. Have you ever seen a show that's called The Magician's Secrets Reveal? <laughs> well, I'm about to show you The Employer's Secrets Reveal. The first trick that they use to keep you under their control are your benefits. Do you know how many people hate their jobs but just stay there because they understand that there's no way that they can afford the insurance? The second trick that they use to get you to work harder for free is the threat of a layoff. And if you are spared, you will work harder and longer and never complain because you know that you need that job to pay your bills. And the third trick that they use is fear of the problems of going to business for yourself. And what is the acronym of fear? False evidence appearing real. Would you rather earn 100% from your own efforts or 1% of 100 different people's efforts? Now, if you said that you would want to earn 100% of your own efforts, please stop this video right now because you are not the type of person that this information can help. I have to tell you about my, uh, my handyman. This guy can fix anything and he does a great job. But the question is, what will happen to him when he gets too old to carry a, a sheet of plywood up a flight of stairs? Have you ever thought about this? Let me ask you, what or who controls your life? Now, when I ask this question in front of a group of people, I always get a lot of people who raise their hand and they say, God controls my life. Well, I have to tell you this. If God controlled our life, there would be no sin. And most men say their wives and most women say their children. Well, it's your source of income. Your source of income controls every aspect of your life to where you're going to live, to what type of car you're going to drive, to what school your children will attend, to what restaurants you will eat, to your source. Your source of income even dictates to you who you will marry. Does any of this make sense to you? Now, here's the secret about money, which I would like to share with you right now. There are two different tax codes in America, one for the employee and one, one for the business owner. Which do you think is better? Taxes are taken from an employee's check before they even get to see it. The government doesn't even trust you enough to, for you to pay your own taxes. So they take it from you at the end of the year and that you have to find a way to try to get it back from them. This makes me laugh when people brag about how much money they get back on their income tax check. I know people say, man, I got $3,000 back. People, it's your money. That's why they call it withholding. You just have to know the legal way of getting it back. And a business owner pays taxes 
after expenses. So do you remember how I showed you how the average person is about $9,000 in the red? Let's look at what can happen to that $9,880 that most people carry that debt over into the next year. This is why most people never get out of debt. With a home-based business, your family medical that's taken out of your check all the time is now tax deductible with a home-based business at about $3,000 per year. If you get your car wash once a month for $20, that's $240 a year. Yes, your car wash can be tax deductible. Your business travel, let's say, is about $1,000. Your business meals and entertainment, let's say about $1,000 per year your business mileage at 55 and a half cents per mile so if you're only driving 20 miles per day for your business that's four thousand fifteen dollars per year deductible your cell phone at a hundred dollars per month which is twelve hundred dollars a year your internet or cable service that you use for your business at a hundred dollars per month that's twelve hundred dollars a year your home office that averages about three thousand dollars per year you can even get this deductible if you live in an apartment if you have any children under 18 years old you can hire them to clean up your home office and pay them up to $6,500 per, per year. That's tax deductible for you and tax free to them. You can even uh, deduct your child's tuition up to $5,250. $5, now these are just a few deductions that you are privy to for having a home-based business and there's much much more. But let's add up all of your new business expenses and it comes out to $26,405. So at $50,000 income less your new expenses expenses of $26,405, your new taxable income is now only $23,595 times the 15% equals $3,539.25, where before you were paying $7,500, which is a savings of $3,960.75 in your pocket. Now that's about $4,000 that you've just earned for having a home-based business. Now I know most of you have probably heard some of these things that say that you can get all these deductions, but when you go to your tax repair, they have no idea what you're talking about and they tell you not to take them. Well, we're going to show you exactly how it's done and refer you to a team of people who specialize in this field of home-based business. So this is the secret of money. You must find a way to keep more of what you're earning and start earning income from other people's efforts. Now before I go, I need to tell you uh, that I agree with most of you that network marketing is one of the most unscrupulous industries in the world. There are so many bad people attracted to this industry because there's no prerequisite and these bad people will say just about anything to get people to join their business. They'll show you all of their eye candy just to get you excited and once you find out the truth that this industry is not as easy as they made it sound, you quit and you tell everyone that this industry stinks. So I know how most of you people feel. And the question that most of you probably have for me right now is with all the bad stuff that I just revealed about this industry, why am I encouraging it? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, they look exactly like corporate America where 97% of the people are on the bottom. And so, why are so many people on the bottom in this industry? Well, you are about to learn what most leaders in this industry don't want you to know. One of the largest problems in this industry is what I call LT, leaders theft. This is where these so-called leaders will poach their own teams by selling them these so-called personal development tools that's supposed to turn them into a network marketing recruiting guru. They charge these, their own team for these trainings that's supposed to help grow their business. And if you have noticed, none of this stuff really works and these leaders just continue to get rich off of their own team. And this is the same team that earned these leaders income. If you are a leader in this industry, would you want your team to be successful? Do you understand that the more money that they earn, the more that you earn? And if you have some knowledge that can help your team, wouldn't you want to give it to them for free to help them to make money? Do you want the majority of your team to earn money like you? If you purchase a franchise, the company gives you the training for free because they want you to be successful. Even if you work on a job, the company, if the company's training is in another state, the company will not only train you for free, but they will also pay for your trip, hotel, and food. And again, with the purpose to get you trained and earn them as much money as you can. So why do these so-called leaders charge their team members to be trained? And what are they training them? If you just believe you too can be rich like me, now, this is the largest problem in this industry. When you invite a prospect to one of these meetings, your prospects see a great speaker with all the eye candy and success. Your prospect begins to think, hmm, I would rather be sponsored by this person because they have more experience, more money, more eye candy, more influence, and that leader can do a lot more for me than you. 
So they tell you that they're not interested and they go behind your back to go talk to this so-called leader. And the worst part about this problem is that these leaders will steal your prospect from you. This happened to a friend of mine. He loves his leader and one day he introduced a major prospect to his leader and he took him to the back, to a back room and the prospect came out and he asked, well, what happened? And he says, I'm not going to join this deal right now. Well, a couple of months later, my friend saw that same prospect at one of their conventions and he asked me, say, hey man, what happened? The prospect told me, hey man, I joined the business that same day when I went into the back room. Your leader told me to tell you that I wasn't going to join. Have this ever happened to you? Have you ever experienced this? Two, there are some companies that base their success on the distributor's failure, which means they pay some of these great leaders to go out and tell a lot of lies to the masses to make them believe it, and only the people who's earning income are the top income earners in the company. Have you noticed that there's always just a handful of people out of thousands who really get to live the good life in this industry? Three, the so-called leaders will teach you the wrong way on how to build your business. And what are they teaching you? It's always about how much money someone has made. But if you don't have the same type of eye candy influence or a large team that follows you from the last deal or the ability to do this business full time, you will never be as successful as that person. Because of all of the financial problems most people are having, they are gullible to this type of trickery. Number four. Network marketing viol violates two rules. They attempt to turn everyone into a motivational speaker. And what is the number one fear of most people? Public speaking. And what is the first lesson that most of us should have been taught as a child? To never talk to strangers. And what does this industry teach us all to do? To talk to everyone you see a three foot rule and when you recruit this way the people get excited for about a month they go to all their friends and family members and then they join the nfl club is there any good in this industry yes there is this industry has created more millionaires than any other industry you have no boss which i really hate that word boss anyway you work the hours that you want to work you take off whenever you want to. You don't have to ask for permission to leave if your child gets sick at school. You are able to do what you want to do and not what you are told to do every day by some boss. You are able to earn like the CEOs from other people's efforts. For example, I took my family on a seven day cruise to Hawaii. When I got back home, I had a check in my mailbox for more than what the trip cost me. Can you tell me of any other industry that will constantly pay me over and over again for the work that I did years ago? What about doctors, lawyers, rappers, boxers, teachers, actors, athletes? Again, I do understand that this industry isn't for everyone because if it was, who would be checking me out at the stores, uh, taking my order at the restaurants, cleaning my cars, cutting my grass? <laughs> I have to tell you about my stepfather. He married my mother over 30 years ago and he went to college and received his degree. He got a good job working for the United States government and he earned over $80,000 per year. That was over 30 years ago, which was a lot of money then. When he retired, my mother and he realized that his pension and social security just wasn't enough for them to live on. I put my mother in a network marketing business and I built it for her. When she got her first check, she called me to ask me if the check was real. My stepfather said, if it's real for me to bring them the cash so they can get the cash and for them to sign it over to me because they didn't want to believe it. They were afraid to take the check to the bank because it had a comma in it. Well, I'll tell you, in this industry, this is something good. This is how this industry can help you and your family. Well, we understand the problems in this industry and we have solved them for the first time. This is the first time this has ever been created. We will not only teach you how to run a home-based business successfully, but we'll also show you how to manage your team properly. This is not any of this so-called personal development nonsense. We will give you all the information that you need to make money and save on your taxes. So I need to ask you a few questions and I know I can't hear you, but your mind will automatically answer questions. If you don't brush your teeth, you will definitely. If you don't pay your bills, you will definitely. If you don't start earning some type of residual income, you will definitely. I've been in this industry for over 23 years full time. The last job I held, I was 16 years old. So if you want to learn the right way, the right questions to ask before you join a home based business, join our network. How to apply the Lipness test to the company and to your sponsor. Join our network. How to evaluate a home-based business and get past all of the hype? Join our network. How to make the government not only pay for your enrollment fee, but also your auto ship? 
join our network. How to properly operate a home-based business, join our network. How to recruit without joining the NFL club, join our network. How to make MLM pay you for the rest of your life, join our network. How to increase your tax return by three to $5,000 each and every year. <laughs> I think you get the point. Please understand there are two ways that you can learn anything in life. One, from your own mistakes, are two from other people's mistakes. Learn from my 23 years of experience and please don't make all the stupid mistakes that I've made in this industry. If any of this makes sense to you and you would like to earn residual income in your spare time and have a system that will teach you how to become a great networker, join our network. If you would like to view a home-based business, please click on the link on this page. Before I go, I need you to watch this video of this doctor who did everything right except create some form of residual income. I'm not going to stay. I'm well, not going to stay. We're going to try, and then if you don't, then we'll look for something else, okay? I'm not going to stay here. Okay, just for a little bit. No, I'm not going to stay here, If you don't like it, if you don't like it, then you don't have to stay. First of all, she wasn't the kind of person that you would take care of. <laughs> she was always taking care of herself. In fact, Janet Mitchell had a brilliant career taking care of others. You've done well in this pregnancy. This is Dr. Mitchell in her 40s, a leading OBGYN. All right. With degrees from Mount Holyoke, Howard, and Harvard, she was nationally known as a tireless advocate for patients with HIV AIDS. I'd like to shift the focus from the disease to the people. Bright, bossy, um, a woman that knew what she wanted and would go after it. Always wanted to be a doctor? Yes. But now it's the doctor who's in need of care. Do you know about Alzheimer's? Yeah. Do you have Alzheimer's? Mm-mm. No? No. You don't have Alzheimer's? Mm -mm. You've seen it in other patients? Mm-mm. Have you seen it in, have you seen it in other people? Mm-hmm. And what happens to people who have Alzheimer's? Uh, they usually just sort of, you know, stand up and, and they don't really do things. Yeah. And they're not cognizant, they're not mm -mm. lucid anymore? No. While Janet pursued her career in New York, Blanche, living in Colorado, says she missed some signals and misinterpreted others. Maybe we see her once a year uh, during Christmas. And I just started noticing, particularly the last couple of Christmases, she didn't interact as much. She was just different. I thought that it was depression. And then really, our daughter Dana, who lives in New York, kept saying to us, something's wrong. I was buying her food. If I didn't buy her food once a week, she wasn't eating. Her niece Dana, who's also an associate producer at ABC News, was alarmed by what she saw. What does this tell you when you look around and, and you came into her house and saw this chaos? It's, you really can sort of track the slow decay of her state of being. So you took her in for tests? Mm hmm It was remarkable. I saw the MRI and you could just see the brain atrophy. It quickly became apparent she needed full-time care, so the family looked to her assets to pay the hefty monthly fees. That's when they began to see how the disease had damaged her life. Janet had lost her job. She was in debt and facing foreclosure. Blanche and her husband realized the economic burden would fall to them. That must have surprised you. She was a doctor, oh, yes. a, mm -hmm. a well-regarded, respected yeah. physician. Mm -hmm. And to come to find out she's having financial problems? It's like, wait a minute, what's going on? You should be taking care of me. <laughs> Not me taking care of you, but uh, at least from a financial perspective. What was her biggest asset? Her house. And she lost that. Her niece Dana made the shocking discovery that Janet had signed over her grand four-story Brooklyn brownstone for a fraction of its value. In New York State, property records are public records. I looked up the property records for this house, and that's where I discovered that she transferred the deed. 
Dr. Mitchell bought the house nearly 20 years ago for $330,000. Now it's estimated to be worth a million and a half. The house next door just sold for two million. So all of this in the kitchen, is this hers or yours? Dana has been sifting through the piles of unopened mail, unpaid taxes, bank accounts, and foreclosure notices. Her family believes Dr. Mitchell answered an internet ad from a subprime lender when she defaulted on her mortgage. She found this man. His name is Mamoon Mirza. Mr. Mirza, I'm David Scott from ABC News. I'd like to ask you about this transaction with Dr. Janet Mitchell. Can okay. you talk to us about that? Uh, talk to my attorney about you, that. Do you, do you... Instead of helping her get a loan through the mortgage company, it appears Mirza made his own deal. In exchange for paying off her mortgage debt totaling about $200,000, Dr. Mitchell signed over her million and a half dollar home to Mamoon Mirza. This is the handwritten agreement Mirza filed, along with documents indicating it was a sale between relatives. He didn't want to discuss that transaction with Nightline. Yes. Was this a legitimate transaction? Yes. Did you know she was a very sick woman? She wasn't sick at the time when we got Mirza here. now admits submitting the record saying it was a sale between relatives, but claims it was a filing error. She was, she was a very sick woman at the time. No, she wasn't. Did you represent to the state that you were a relative of Dr. Janet Mitchell? No, I didn't. That's what the document says, sir. Okay. Listen, uh, my attorney yes. is going to talk to her this. Is there any possibility that she knew what she was doing when she sold her house to Mirza? No. None whatsoever. I, I would, I would put, base my life on that. There is no way she would sign away her house um, without a lawyer and a handwritten contract um, and, and get nothing in return. When we talk to her five days after her move into the nursing home, Dr. Mitchell herself is able only to repeat a spotty loop about the incident, which is typical of Alzheimer's victims. Do you remember your house in Brooklyn? Uh, yeah, in Brooklyn. Yeah, it's a, it's a house that um, a friend of ours had given to us. Really? Mm-hmm. In Fort Greene? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's happened to it? No, it's still there. It's still there? Yeah, it's still there. Who owns it now? Uh, my husband is there with it, so it's okay. Who's your husband? Um... Uh, I'm trying to remember what, who he is, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, she and her husband were divorced, and he died two years ago. She's equally confused about the deal with Mirza. Did you sign your house to him? Mm-mm. Does he own your house now? Mm-mm. Because I told him that he didn't. Did he try to buy your house from you? He tried. What did he say? Mm hmm What did he say? I said, uh, excuse me, because you ain't coming into my house. And what happened? Hmm? That's why I told him. I said, no, you ain't coming into my house. This is my house. It ain't your house. That's what I told him. Her family says that house could have provided the money for Dr. Mitchell's long-term care. Now they're paying the $3,000 a month bill. That's my biggest fear right now. And my biggest struggle is making sure she has the finances to take care of her in, in a nice place. It has been a tragic descent for Dr. Mitchell. The disease has robbed her and her family in so many ways. The eyes, I look in the eyes and the eyes are different. I had to say goodbye to the old Janet. I can't keep thinking about, oh, it's so sad that she used to be this, and now look at her. Well, yeah, now look at her. So who is she now? She's still my sister. But you're still a caregiver. I will be now, probably for the rest of her life, for my life, whichever one of us goes first. <laughs> It's going to be good. Trust me. I know. I'm your little sister. Who can you trust? This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Hello. Fort Collins, Colorado. Dr. Mitchell is not alone in suffering from early onset Alzheimer's. It's estimated as many as 400,000 people have the condition and were hit with it before the age of 65. As for Mamoun Mirza, he has not been charged with any crime. However, after we contacted the Brooklyn DA's office, they told us they are now looking into the matter. We'll be right back.